because that is certain. So here, this is a conversation with my wife, Marika. So we're taking up on chapter three of Super Day describing with um, uh, uh, appreciating the questions you have required to me. Uh, so the beauty of the intelligent man, must be known, is uh, on the threshold of death. So he's already answered this and he's going to elaborate further on to this. Of course, Maharaj Pariki, he um, somehow rather, just to recap, got cursed by a young brown boy just over something really foolish which should not have happened. But um, he accepted that, that well, this is my um, lot in life, this is my karma. So he was given seven days, so he just immediately went to the bank of the river Ganges and he passed it, no water, um, and just constantly heard <coughs> Sri Mahabharata from Sukadeva Goswami. Hari Nam Kirtanam. So he's all in the process of hearing and chanting, which is the prescribed duty for those human beings on the threshold of death. So, um, so we're taking the solace from this room of Bhagavatam, from this instructions of Sukadeva uh, Goswami to Parikit Maharaj, and we, uh, as uh, aspiring Manusanam's intelligent people, are trying to follow the example of Parikit Maharaj, who was the exemplary human being that he forgot anything material and just focused on the lotus feet of Supreme Personality of Godhead. On the other hand, within our social structure we have today, Sri Lopaka explains uh, unintelligent people. Foolish people think, oh, we will live forever. And there's actually, <laughs> I was always making a good life, there's always songs about it. Oh, you know, we will live forever, you know, like that, isn't it? And um, every year they had this major ceremony in the uh, worldwide, they had what's called the Oscars and the Emmys, you know, for the most talented actors and musicians in this world. Right? And there was one small section for those who have gone beyond, for those who have passed away. And oh, guess what, so and so. Oh, he's passing away. What's his song? Oh, he's going to live forever. <laughs> going to live forever. So, um, but everybody's going to die, right? So, it um, doesn't matter how prominent the person you are, what arrangements you make. That is said, um, Yamaraj uh, once was <laughs> in a situation. He asked him the question. What's the most amazing thing that you see? And Yamaraj answered, of course, that everyone is going to die, but each one thinks it's not going to happen to me. Isn't it? It's like, hey, we don't want to think about it. What would be so morbid? This is the social structure. It's like, we're talking about death. I don't be so morbid. You know, the next thing you talk about religion. You know? So um, this is sort of called ignorance, the foolish man. So this is an ignorant society. So this is what Prabhupada always says, Captain Dog society. Because everyone goes to the uh Yamaraj where they are scrutinizingly studied for their activities and <coughs> then due to their action they're with another boy, Sansara. So this is going on and on and on. This doesn't happen to animals just for human beings because human beings, they have consciousness, they can decide what is right, what is wrong. So, um, <coughs> the demons, the freaking brief, like the deep, the demons, the atheists, the disbelievers, the simple person, they don't know these things. They don't know what to do in a human body or what not to do. That they don't know. So there is no education in society in this regard. So what are we bringing up? Class of people with demoniac tendencies. I don't like to say everybody's a demon, but the tendency to demoniac, well, that sort of goes with the territory. So therefore, um, 
The word Manishinama means that those who are especially intelligent will take the Krishna consciousness. Right? So, following in the footsteps of our acharyas, it is our duty to educate the people who are misguided. Okay, there is unintelligent, there is a foolish person, but that was all of us. Unless we were born in this sort of society. And if we are, they're all out there sort of uh, not listening to Bhagavatam. So, uh, most of us who have come here, we're just sort of uh, living in this category. And how do we come in? We got educated. So, we looked at Krishna consciousness. And of course, what is the first step of education? That, um, we're not this body. That's the first step. I am sure people are not this body. So, this, even the PhD, you can do whatever degree you want, science, arts, engineering, PhD, they're not going to tell you this. You know, the highest faculty of education will not tell you this. What the speed of going down the system? So, uh, in the Garden of Tanisha, it is stated that anyone who dies not knowing that he's this body, wait for it, he's a creepana, a cripple minded person. Um, why? Because he did not and could not utilize the opportunity given to him by nature. Sri Prabhupada always says that you, um, Australian people, American people, Europeans, you have these such nice, beautiful bodies, you have a nice country with lots of facilities, there is no poverty here, you have all the faculties there, but in spite of this, if you do not take the Christian consciousness, then you are a miser. Right? Miser means someone who has money and hoards it and he cannot utilize it. So, therefore, we don't utilize all the faculties within our body. Um, in Krishna consciousness, uh, we creep in us. So human life is actually meant for this um, sole purpose to understand, hey, I'm not this body. I tell Brahmaji to myself, I'm Brahmaji. I'm Brahmaji. I'm not this body. So that's the first step of education. So there is no barricade to this. So the door has been, the floodgates have been thrown open by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that everyone can become enlightened. Uh, how? By the good association of the devotees. Everyone can uh, uh, automatically understand what is God if you're around the devotees. There's always that, um, that enlightened mood that is there. That, um, Sooner or later, sometimes as devotees, we might meet some people and we'll say, hello, how are you going? How's... Even Sanatan goes to Bhakti, one of the biggest Bhaktis used to go to the village and used to inquire, how is your brother, how is your sister, how is your farm going, is everything okay? Because you know what, ultimately, as a devotee, the conversation will come back to Krishna, they'll want to know, what are you doing? Who is Christian? But um, ultimately, that's the uh, nature of a devotee that um, he is sort of so attractive and he's all knowing that he gives out this sort of association. So, um, in this Christian consciousness movement, taking shelter of the spiritual master, who we talk about the Sunday and that we are imbued with this knowledge of Krishna and um, taking the Shelter the current for our six gas flunkies, punch a rifle in the system. Everyone can become elevated to the Brahman platform, uh, situated on the mode of goodness. And in this mode of goodness, you have the two qualities, Kama and Raja, they know the third one who speaks the Christian consciousness. This is the spirit of Bhagavatam. So, um, Krishna is situated in everyone's heart. He's the back, benefactor, the fruitful devotee. Um, he cleansed the desire of material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee 
of the post, but we can say that like, you know, like if we um, overeat and we get sick, and then we have to have a few, we have to fast, we have to take some sort of bitters or something like that. If we go out in the cold, go out in the rain, we have any protection, we have the cold, we get sick, and we're so sensitive, we're down the way of laws of nature. But uh, people are still thinking that um, I'm independent, and I like to hear that we're all five, we're all one. They like to hear that. That's the line leading the line, the politicians, the scientists, we're all misleading you like that, that we think we can sort it out and we know where it all came from. Um, and that is God. And then there's the capitalists. Um, more so these days, uh, people worship the capitalists more than they worship the scientists. So you can see, you know, Forbes richest 20 capitalists. Everybody wants to read who's, who's the richest person in the world, who's the richest person, who's the richest woman, who's, you know, who's the richest sports person. So they sort of worship wealth. So, um, you know, there's a philosophy that's been going around for a few years of greed is good. You know, it just sort of become greedy that's a uh, very, um, very, very, um, poetry is thing to do with your life. But until you we understand that that's just another further bondage that we tie up by the three parts of material nature, we get bound up forever because there is nothing there. There is nothing there at the end of your life when you run that threshold. So the essence is the Bhagavad Gita. We all get back to Bhagavad Gita. Sarva Dhamma, Rukhya Gya. Means surrender all your concepts. It's sort of not only, you know, just abandon all religions. It's just like, you know, just abandon this religion. But we have our own religions within ourselves. We have our own habits. We're religiously addicted to things, right? So give up this and just actually uh, surrender your concepts. And then Krishna tells us um, that um, you'll be able to actually understand him. Come to him. So Krishna comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he keeps Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, we follow in his footsteps and he tells us to do what's in the Bhagavad Gita. So we are the poor of Matha Sampradaya, we in the Sampradaya for Chaitanya. And what is that? What's our business? It's not difficult, but we follow the process, Krishna consciousness. So that's the first thing we do if we want to help. The foolish, the unintelligent people. We're very eager to say that a lot of people foolish, they're unintelligent, this and that. But for us to actually help people, we have to follow the process ourselves. That's the first thing. So, um, so therefore, we can't make things up. We follow the process as it is, as it is given to us by spiritual master, as it is in the Bhagavad Gita. And we follow the rules and regulations, follow the 16 rounds, 10 16 rounds, we accept done by authorities. And then, as a servant of Krishna, um, Krishna will assure us because he said in the heart he is reciprocated, he said, in Prabhupada's words, magic will act. Right? So, that um, Krishna will help us put the magic, that Krishna gives us protection and he gives us that. Avenue, but we can jump ahead. We can um, taste, get a taste of that higher realm of spirituality, and then take the path back to the, that's the path that we go back to God. So that's the purpose of human existence to actually get back onto this path, this path back to Godhead. So I'll finish here. Um, uh, can I ask make any comments or questions? Yes. Um, uh, the statement is the first um, 
first step is that we're not this body. Uh, to understand we're not this body. So then, when we're on this level, um, then Krishna, um, well, first of all, then we, we can understand we're not this body, but then we have to, have to understand that Krishna is the supreme control of everything that is Bhagavan. So, um, therefore, he's in control of our situation. So, uh, then this material energy. So, the material energy comes along, it's always there. The three lights are always acting. Um, they're annoying us, the adi-bodhi, adi-dhati, and adi -adhi. But, also, in the same chapter, Krishna said, so, um, Three modes of material nature was that they be the Esha Guna Mahi, Mama Maya, Divakira, Mama Kilam, So the, the three modes of material energy are difficult to overcome, but one who will surrender and you leave can easily cross beyond it. So people can also say, I'm a spirit of the total property, not a self, but there's that duality that is there. That's that can be the first little step in God realization, but then the next step is to come up in the Bhagavan. So there, then, we see that the material energy is relentless. It doesn't mean that we're off the hook. It doesn't mean we have to get these diseases and sicknesses. At any stage of life, it's a lesson to be learned. Threshold. It's like, you know, like, um, Everybody's on the threshold. We have so many young devotees that have passed away and died. So this is the lesson for the material energy. And um, so Krishna is there living our heart is reciprocating and he's taking the soul back to Godhead because actually whatever it is, it's a test. So I hope what says it's a stepping stone. Whatever we experience, if we don't experience it, it comes as a package. They are enriched by you, uh, old age, disease, and death. Especially old age and disease, they go hand in hand with brother and sister. So we all experience that. And so that is just like the stepping stone for us to really, really understand about this body. And sometimes we can really test it uh, prematurely. We're not ready for it. Hey, you can't come up on the seat, you can't come up on this. We're not ready for it. So that's our plan that we're making in this body again. It's a sort of this moment that we're sort of going forward. But if we're going forward to Krishna consciousness and that happens, we go, okay, so be it. This is Krishna's plan. So we can understand this, that actually uh, Krishna may want us in some other capacity. So that's the consciousness that we have. What about the environment? The environment. But one thing I'd like to say is that those who, we can always improve, but it's always, whose environment is it? Krishna's environment, that, that, that's that's absolutely. So, you still have to always face Krishna out of the environment, and I only look at it subjectively and relatively according to their concept of some of those existing problems. But the only see it very holistically and can be the source of I'll be interested to hear what how you put it on that way as well. Oh, the environment, yes. Yeah, so, um, well, the first thing about the environment is we have to know that everything in the environment is for the spirit of soul, you know, like the trees, the bushes, the plants, everything, everything is the spirit of soul. That's the first understanding. But again, once again, to get back, you can know it's not an air drama. Uh, I was in Jagger Puri one time. <laughs> and um, I was there with a couple of brahmacharis, right? And this pundit, this spirit guy comes up and he goes, Nikya Vinaya, Santana, Bhavas, and Suri Savas Prabhupada. You, my friends, you all need the sun. Well, this is sort of a lead up line to the money. The pundit does not have a enough. So that's the sort of vision, that's true environmental vision that we actually can see things in perspective. Otherwise, we might overreact. It's just like the, the common thing in Australia is the greedies versus the farmers, right? The greedy 
should say, you want to preserve the land. And then they let the trees grow. And then there's a big bushfire, and then it gets burnt down, and the farmers bring them, flame the greenies, so you greenies who didn't control the environment properly. You know? So there's that, all that to and froing. So then it becomes an issue, right? So there's no solution sometimes. Of course, there are solutions that stop plastic and stop polluting the oceans. All this. this is just common sense that we go along with that. But there's a deeper thing. There has to be a change of the heart because that desire, that simple desire for greed within the heart is always going to be there. And if you don't understand the nature of things, like the nature of animals, if you're environmentalists, the first thing you should be doing is not eating meat, first of all. If you understand that that hunted for some of us, you know, that the living entity is all the things, then you can have a proper holistic approach to the whole environment. Um, so many people just sort of branch off onto things like um, shape the shark, save the whale, save the koalas, there's a big koala in the Scotia down there, save the koalas. All that is so behaving, it's just piecemeal, it's not the part of the whole picture. Like, um, it's like a 529, but to be popped around, you get this up or something, so I walk the piece around. So, Bokram, that's the sort of, <clears throat> when you understand that uh, Bokram, that Krishna is the giver of all, the star of all uh, living entities, and when you understand Krishna and respect to all the living entities in this world, like Krishna is not the living entities, then naturally we'll sort of gravitate towards being in harmony with the environment once again. Now, so there is conflict right now. It's to do with the basic, to get the philosophy right, and then things will fall off from that. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I want to add a little bit of a question. You said that uh, it has to be a change of heart. And I've often heard from people who are much more into uh, uh, saving animals, like in all kinds of capacity. There's actually a lot of people who actually know things, but they're not vegetarian. So yeah. You can see, like, they're focused on one thing, but they don't grasp the, the story behind it. Yeah, philosophy is incomplete, yeah. So it's just, it just gets back to the simple thing, as I said, the first lesson for everybody, no matter who you are, is uh, I'm not this body, you know, understand, I'm not this body, I'm this spirit, soul. So from there, we can go forward. I think yeah. your, your point of, uh, of the brief principle and the basic change of the heart is very important, because as long as the Three principles without control, that there will never be a solution to the, uh, you know, saving the environment because that's in that three principles such a strong system in this idea. So it'll just, it just be a, a battle, and in one sense it can never be resolved. So, uh, you know, the, the, the point of changing the heart, and it really can only be done through the purely simple, as I uh, spiritual, so mm -hmm. we have to work on that primarily and other things secondary. Yes, yeah, so we have like the <coughs> civil libertarians and the political correctness and all the sort of different things. When they're trying to be healthy with society, everyone should get a fair go on society. But somehow or other, you see that these people are more or less overrun by the sort of concept of uh, greed in the capitalist society which we look at today. I was explaining to someone yesterday that we had the Barna Ashram system and somewhere along the line you know, the, the, car, the, the kind of caste system got a bit polluted. So it's the same with capitalism whenever it began, that there was some sort of, you know, that there was supposed to be help, you know, help your fellow man and, you know, just sort of like everybody should live nicely in society, but somewhere around it become polluted and it's just become like so much, so many people got so much and so many people don't have, so the whole system has also become polluted that it doesn't work, you know, so when you try to sort of correct, make some small changes within this society, it's just, um, what is it, put a band-aid on, that's probably by saying it's just, it's a band-aid, a band-aid solution, you know, you stitch up something yeah, and then somewhere else something goes wrong. So the whole whole solution, and it's so difficult right now we're just sort of here and pushing the bodies, but just by this process of um, being here, 
Krishna see it. Krishna seeing Krishna stuff as a Prabhupada said the magic lack. If we are strong and we staunch and we strongly believe in Krishna, we can influence so many people. It's just up to us to actually practice this business of Krishna consciousness. This is our business to actually go back to God here and to take everyone with us. So if we strong like that, we've got nothing to lose. We just try our best. We don't have to go the extra yard and go to a demonstration or something say for a while. We're doing our best as we are. No, I better believe it. All glory is the Shiva Prabhupada.